Thank you, Jan. As many of you may know, is an entrepreneur, attorney, also based in New York, and he um, has the hotel chain in Armenia as well as a, a rug business, but also has a foundation arm. And the foundation works with uh, poverty-stricken families. Does a lot of things, but also works with poverty-stricken families in Armenia. And the way this project came about was that the um, local social workers who were dealing in the Tufankian Foundation, who were dealing with the poverty-stricken families, noticed that with the economic downturn, 2008, 2009, many, many, many more families were needing services, were lacking food, were, were dealing with major health care issues, shelter, and just very basic, basic needs that they were lacking. So the foundation approached me, having seen the Separated Families Project, they approached me and asked me if I would go back to Armenia and spend time with these families and document basically the face of poverty in Armenia. Um, also, in, in some ways, it was uh, a, meant as a project for the diaspora to see because the foundation felt that many of us, uh, although we engage Armenia, maybe we don't quite engage the margins of society and maybe we don't um, haven't had an opportunity to see these faces or see these or hear these stories. So that was the sort of spirit in which this project started. Um, before I launch into the images, I wanted to just uh, give you a little sense of what we're talking about in terms of the numbers. The um, poverty rate went up for the first time uh, in 10 years, I believe, between 2008 and 2009. So it was going down and then it went up with the economic downturn, the global economic downturn. So from 25%, it went up to 28%. So about 28% of the population lives in poverty in Armenia. Uh, that makes for almost a million people, 918,000 people. Um, however, the images you're going to see are people who are living in extreme poverty, who can't even provide for the basic needs in their lives, food and shelter and health care, clothing. And um, that number is somewhere around 7%. Again, these are official statistics. I have heard when I tell people these numbers that it's probably worse, but this is kind of, this is the, what the World Bank holds out as the statistics. And being in extreme poverty means that you live on less than a dollar and 25 a day. So I'm going to show you 15 images. There are over 60 images in the book, um, many, many more, over 4,000 pictures in the whole project that I took when I was there. But I'm just going to show you 15 and introduce you to a few people. Um, this is Grigor. He is a 29-year-old uh, young man who supports uh, three children, a mother and um, wife in Shahumyan, which is on the outskirts of Echmiadzin, basically by going through this massive garbage dump every day. And his, he's not foraging for food, but foraging for metal and plastic and anything he can find to sell to basically then uh, you know, make money for the daily bread. Um, I went with him to this place on a very early morning, which you can see in this image, uh, because he told me that the best time to, for garbage collecting is at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. when the fresh garbage comes in from the cities. So we went there together and um, spent about three, four hours there. Um, I took about 500 pictures just in this one place, maybe 450, but I think these two are the only ones really pretty much that say what it might be like to be Grigor every day in this place. This is back at home. This is Grigor again on the left side, and that's his mother, Haigush. She also works, um, and she basically slaughters uh, chickens for a local businessman, and sometimes brings home the chicken heads for the family to eat. <clears throat> the, you're going to meet her in the video, and you're also going to meet Grigor in the video, and. Um, uh, I think, I mean, you know, I can kind of go on and on about their stories, but I think it's a diff it has a different meaning for you to actually hear their voices. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Christina. She's six years old. And this is in Yerevan. This image was taken in Yerevan. Whereas this is in Echmiadzin, which, uh, as we all know, is the, our, the spiritual capital of the, of the country where the uh, 
uh, Mother Cathedral is. <clears throat> this is um, in Yerevan, and about six or so months before this picture was taken, Christina was living in a barn with um, her siblings and her mom, and uh, was uh, basically dealing with the later stages of malnutrition. The family had fled a domestic violence situation. Uh, the mother had been, um, the father I should say, Christina's father had lost his job and had taken to drinking alcoholism and then had started beating up Christina's mom. So the mother, Armina, flees and the only place she can go is this neighbor's barn that they clean up and they start living in. It's the winter and she doesn't have any money to feed them so she's, she feeds the kids sugar water basically for about a month. And when this nonprofit organization found Christina and particularly her younger sister Ani, they were very, very, in very, very, very bad shape. But thankfully, they're they're fine now. They survived, um, uh, sort of barely. Um, this is where she lives now, which is not much better than the barn. Um, it's a house on the outskirts, not even the outskirts. It's in Yerevan. No, it's like a suburb of Yerevan. Um, I also photographed in the dormitories in Yerevan. There are many dormitories where very small, there's many, many people living in very small spaces. This is Arthur. He is a uh, Karabakh war veteran. And um, he lives in this space, I should say this space, for, with eight children and his wife. This is about as far back as I could stand to shoot the whole space. And one of the interesting things about um, this family is that they've been living in this space for about 14 years. And of course, some people have said to me, you know, in sort of Q&A, well, you know, gosh, if they're poverty stricken, why are they having so many kids, right? That there's eight children in this family. And um, which leads me to the issue of abortion in Armenia. There are, abortion is pretty much the birth control method in Armenia. So generally women in Armenia will have approximately on average about 15 abortions each, 15 to 20 abortions. So rather than use protection on the front end, abortion is used as the method of birth control. This family is an extremely religious family and just doesn't believe in abortion. So they are um, you know, basically having uh, children. And of so of course poverty has everything to do with education. And to what extent can, you know, can we educate, and social workers on the ground educate families in terms of these issues? This is Ruzana, different family. She lives in a shack about uh, 30 minutes outside of Yerevan, closer to the Turkish border. And um, she lives in this place with her three children. They also go through the trash every day for their livelihood. The major problem, this is the shack, basically, where they live, and the major problem for this family is water, because their water is about a 30-minute walk for this family in both directions, so round trip of one hour that the children in this family walk, and also Ruzana walks, and they also don't have a toilet, like not even a, an outhouse kind of toilet, so they use the open fields around this shack um, to go to the bathroom. and. Um, the, they collect stuff at the garbage dump. This is the eldest son, Never. He is actually a Down syndrome child. And yet, yet he is very functional considering you know, what he has to do every day. He told me that he doesn't let his brothers and sisters get the water. He gets the water every day. And getting water means basically walking half an hour to the closest neighbor's house and then asking for it. And as they mentioned, they mentioned to me that sometimes the neighbors just kind of get fed up and they don't want to give them any water. So it's, they're sort of at the mercy as the, as, as, of the closest neighbor. It's not even like a, like a, uh, a uh, communal well. This is another family. This is Nune. Most of the families I photographed for this project are very close to Yerevan. They're no more than about 20 minutes or 30 minutes from the center. This family I traveled about two hours to meet. Um, they had been written about in um, one of the local newspapers in Armenia called Hetk, it's the investigative journalist's newspaper. And the eldest son in this family had not been to school in like two, three years.